So we're going to learn the fundamentals of double integrals and use that knowledge to build up to this basic example. Now, when we start thinking about double integrals, the first question we want to ask is how does that relate to our previous knowledge of single integrals? If we're doing a single integral, for example, the integral from 0 to 1, what this is talking about is an area under a particular curve. So this curve right here is y equals x squared, and we want to find the area between 0 and 1. That's going to be this area in here. And the most basic way to do a single integral like this is using the limit of a Riemann sum. What that means is we approximate this integral by taking a bunch of rectangles on that region and adding them up and saying the sum of the areas of this rectangles is basically the value of the integral. But as we increase the number of rectangles up to infinity, those rectangles essentially become the curve and therefore the area of the rectangles gives us the proper value for the integral. So if we're looking at a double integral, what is that saying? Well, for a single integral, we're integrating over one particular direction. We're moving this way. When we're looking at a double integral, that means we're looking at two different directions. So rather than just having one horizontal axis of input, we're going to end up with two different axes that both represent inputs, just like when we're looking at any multivariable function. So we're going to have x and y inputs both, as we see inside the integral here. So how does the idea of splitting our range into specific rectangles extend to when we're looking at multiple dimensions? Well, when we're looking at a single variable integral, taking these rectangles essentially amounts to looking at the range between 0 and 1 and splitting it up into a specific number of points on the number line and taking the area value for each of these particular ranges and adding them up. This is the one-dimensional example. So if we're looking at two dimensions, we essentially have two different number lines that are perpendicular to each other, and we have to look at a range in both directions. So say we were taking an integral over this particular box, where this is x equals 1, this is y equals 1. Just like before, we would want to split up the x range into a certain number of partitions, but we would also want to split up the y range. And so if we're looking at particular rectangles, we actually are going to take squares like this as the partitions of our input space. Now when we were looking at the one-dimensional case, we took this one-dimensional length and added a height to get a rectangle. If we're taking a rectangle and adding a height, that's going to give us a rectangular prism. So I'll put a couple of visuals on the screen now for you to see what that looks like. Essentially, we have a smooth curve that we're trying to find the area, but when we split it up into a few different regions, we're able to take rectangular prisms that approximate the volume under that curve, and then we add all of those up. So because we're looking at a two-dimensional input space from the beginning, a double integral computes the volume just like a single integral computes the area. So now we understand what a double integral is doing. We're looking at a two-dimensional input region and having a function on top of that like a surface that defines the height at every particular point. We want to find the volume under that surface in the 2D region. The question now, though, is how do we actually compute that volume? Well, one way that we might approach that is by realizing that we know how to do single integrals already. So if we could turn a double integral into a problem of doing, for example, two single integrals, that would be something that we can handle. Well, we know that a double integral is computing volume. So one way to try and simplify this problem would be to look at another method for finding the volume under a particular surface. We already looked at the method where we take a bunch of rectangular prisms and add up their individual volumes just like a Riemann sum. So now what we want to do is find another method for computing the same volume without this rectangular prism method. In order to do that, we're going to hop into MATLAB for a second so that we can visualize another way of approaching this idea.
So now that we're in MATLAB, we're going to take a look at another way to find the volume of this surface. Before, we were looking at dividing it into rectangular prisms. Now, a second way to compute that volume is to start by slicing this surface in the direction of one of our axes and computing the area of that slice. Then when we integrate those area slices in the opposite direction, that will give us the final volume. Now I'm going to play an animation so we can visualize that idea. And you can see the red part here talking about the area slice. We pick a particular value for one of the axes and we use an integral to compute the area along that axis. Then we move in the other direction, the direction of the other axis, and as we go along, we can add up all of those areas to get the final volume under the entire range of that surface. So now we have an alternate method of computing the volume by taking slices of area across a particular direction. Let's use that to try and evaluate this example here. First, we need to understand the region R over which we're trying to find the volume. It's bounded in two dimensions by three different curves. First, we have x equals 0, which is just the y-axis here. Then we have y equals 1, which is going to show up right there. And then we have y equals x. So we want the region bounded by these three curves. And we can see that that's going to show up on the inside right here. We want to try to take area slices. So first thing we have to do is pick a direction where we're going to do the slices. For now, I'm going to choose to go in the x direction. But remember that because either way we're computing the same volume, whether we go in the y direction or the x direction doesn't affect our final result. So if we're going in the x direction, let's take a look at what those area slices would look like. For a particular value of x, the area that we're looking at is going to be sliced in this direction. And we want to think about the range of y values over which we're integrating to get that area. Notice that we start our bottom point down on the line y equals x, and we end on the line y equals 1. So in order to find this area slice of our curve going in this direction, we want to take the integral with respect to y between y equals x and y equals 1. And inside of that range, we're going to look at x squared y plus y squared x as our input. Because we've chosen to slice in a particular value of x, x is essentially a constant while we do this integration. Once we do this, we want all of those slices added up in the x range between 0 and 1. So we integrate this area slice with respect to x over this range. Notice that y equals x and y equals 1 intersect that final value of x equals 1. And once we do this, we're going to get our final answer for volume. So let's do out this example and see what we get. On the inside, when we integrate with respect to y, we're going to keep the integral from 0 to 1 on the outside for x. The integral of x squared y is x squared y squared over 2. And the integral of y squared x is y cubed x over 3. Again, this is just the power rule because we're treating x as a constant. Now we're going to evaluate that at y equals 1 and y equals x. So when we do this, we get the integral from 0 to 1 of. At y equals 1, we get x squared over 2 plus 1 cubed is 1, so we just have x over 3. Then we're going to subtract x squared y squared when we plug in y equals x. That's going to be x to the fourth over 2. And then we have y cubed is also equal to x times x. That's going to give us x to the fourth again, this time over 3 dx. So on the inside here, this is going to be 5 sixths x to the fourth, just adding those fractions together. And from here, we just have three different instances of the power rule. So we can plug all these in. When we integrate x squared over 2 with respect to x, we get x cubed over 6. And we add. This next one is going to give us x squared over 6. And then finally, we have minus x to the fourth. We integrate that. That's going to be x to the fifth. 5 over 5 will cancel out. So we just get divided by 6 again, evaluated at 1, 0. When we plug in x equals 0, again, all of those are going to vanish. So we plug in x equals 1. 1 sixth 
plus one sixth minus one sixth. These will cancel out, and we get one sixth as our answer. So, the way that we got here was by reinterpreting the idea of volume using area slices. That lets us set up the integral of an integral, which means we're just doing some single variable calculus, letting other variables be constant. So we do two different integrals in a row, and we get to our final answer just like this.